You're listening to The Ones Ready Podcast, a team of Air Force Special Operators forged in combat with over 70 years of combined operational experience, as well as a decade of selection instructor experience. If you're tired of settling and you want to do something you truly believe in, you're in the right place. Now here's your host, former prep course ops superintendent and current special reconnaissance training guru, Trent Segmiller. Hey everybody, welcome to the team room with One's Ready. Uh, it's Trent here. We're, today we're going to be talking about controlling your actions under a lot of different situations. Uh, so first off, we just want to start with saying thank you for watching and listening and looking at all of our stuff on uh, social media. I'm too old to know everything that's out there that you guys are looking at, So, but we appreciate everything that we're putting out and you guys uh, taking care of it and uh, leaving all the great reviews that we've been getting uh, for the podcast and everything else. Um, also, speaking of really awesome people, Let's talk about Strike Force Energy, Alpha Brew Coffee Company, uh, Alpha Brew Coffee Company for a minute. Uh, they're they're supporting us, so go to their websites, put in ones ready for your uh, your discount code, and uh, they'll take care of you. Um, so today, um, let's get right into it. Controlling your actions that's going to be huge uh, when you're going through training, when you're on team, and everything else. Um, and so I know I've seen this a lot in the pipelines and and on team, and and we always talk about. The only thing that you can control is your reaction to the situation. Uh, so I kind of want to start off with Brian. Uh, Brian, when, when you were an instructor in the pipeline, let's jump right in. Uh, how did you see this playing out? How do people react to situations? And what are the good and bad things that you saw while uh, during your time down there? Yeah, Trent. So a lot of the things that, like you're saying, it's really important to control your actions in any situation. And, um, you know, you can overcome whatever kind of how with your why. So keeping that in the back of your head whenever you wake up in the morning, it's the same thing. Like, you know, Peach always posts on Instagram. He's talking about make sure you get up whenever your alarm goes off, wake up in the morning, control your actions in that way. Don't let your feelings and, you know, your tiredness and your soreness or whatever, whenever you get into the pipeline, control what your actions are going to be. So that's a huge thing whenever you get to selection specifically, because there are going to be a lot of times when, you know, in your chest, your, your heart's beating, you know, 140 times a minute or whatever, because you just finished doing duck walks, you just finished doing an underwater, you just finished doing whatever. But on the outside, you need to be that calm demeanor and that's what I would tell guys all the time is you really need to just look like that duck analogy that we always put out there you know calm on the surface and then your feet are just kicking like hell on the on the under the surface so be like that duck control your actions means just you know you know what the task is going to be you know that some underwaters are coming you know that push-ups you're going to get dropped so do it to the best of your ability and then show the instructors and show your teammates that you're there to actually perform and you're not going to be affected by, you know, whatever kind of things happen and the instructors throw at you. So that's a really important aspect. Um, and then and the getting out of bed thing in the morning, I always tell people that was one of the most difficult times for me throughout the day. So once you are able to, you know, step down off that bed, um, you wake up and you're like, let's do this stuff right now. You're not thinking about all that other crap or how you failed the day prior or any of that. You're thinking about, all right, what's my next step? What do I got to do? Control one step after the other and put one foot in front of the other. And that's how you're going to make it through the day um, by controlling your actions there. Right. And, and, and as an instructor, when you're down there, did you, did you do things deliberately uh, to see students reaction to, to some of the situations? Oh, all the time. No way. <laughs> yeah. Oh, you know, I want to hear the stories. Back? No way. <laughs> Well, I mean, because you're not a big dude, Brian. So I mean, <laughs> hey, like, hey, hey, well, careful, careful, whoa. careful. Whoa, hey. shots fired. <laughs> hey, big things come in small packages. All right, you know that better that's than not anybody. The, that's not the same. You know, you that's know that better than any. All. It's not even. Yeah, it's not even close. It is the same. I just said. Golly, it. I We're just opened about. my mouth and I didn't even realize <laughs> what I said. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Got I, it. Right. Just big let party, me small let bot. me dispel any rumors that are out there. I'm not a gigantic guy. In case you guys. <laughs> <laughs> We've been wondering. There's been a lot of yeah. There's been a lot of fake news going around. Yeah. I'm not some sort of giant. I'm not, not a giant. I'm, I'm not a basketball player or anything like that. All right. Uh, so basically, um, you know, a lot of things that we used to do in order as an instructor, you're kind of playing a role, right? And all of us kind of have been there a little bit. We know that we have to put the pressure on. We have to, you know, put on an environment for the students to participate in and for them to kind of get a reaction out of them. That's all it is the whole time. So, you know, believe it or not, I can do a, a fair amount of yelling whenever I have to do it. That's not my thing most of the time. But um, so 
we would turn up the volume. We would do a lot of the, uh, the sirens come out, the bullhorn comes out, and everyone's like, oh, crap, it's about to go down. It's like, we can all remember when we were at the pool and the bullhorn came out, we're like, oh. And that, oh, was, no. that was the duck analogy right there because you're just your heart's just like, oh, my God. And you're, <laughs> you're trying to stay calm like, you're, like I got this, but you're shaking, and you're like, oh, crap, what are they going to do to us? But uh, uh-huh. a lot of times it would just be for show like that. We'd roll up in a big squad as instructors and with the bullhorn and just walk in there like we're angry. And we'd immediately, you know, in the van, we were like, oh, yeah, we're totally going to drop them. What are you going to say? All right. Yeah. And I'm going to drop them because of this. Right. Yeah. <laughs> and it's going to get it's going to be so awesome. So then All right, we Brian, you start off. Have you're the game, biggest yeah. one. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Go in the front. You're going to break. <laughs> break in the room for us. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, we'd come in and do that kind of stuff or you know, just mess with them in different ways. You know, whenever we walk in an area, we have to, they have to call the area to attention. So we'd mess with them in that way and see if they're paying attention and always just find a reason to kind of drop them. Because there's always something that we can find a reason for. So right. uh, that's kind of how we played it up. See how they deal with it. So going from the beginning of the pipeline to the end of the pipeline. So in the beginning of the pipeline, it's a, a lot of stress that uh, is, is a little more physical based, I would say, and uh, just learning the environment. And then when we get to Aaron, uh, who was an instructor towards the end of the pipeline, you're, you're learning your trade, you're getting more technical and that type of thing. Aaron, what did you see uh, while you were down there um, from the students and, and what did you do and, and, and just share some of your experiences and why it's important and what you saw from the students controlling their actions or not controlling their actions uh, towards the end of the pipeline. Yeah. So the the other kind of nuanced thing too, is you got to see students control their actions in like different scenarios, right? Like, so sometimes there were like disciplinary things. Sometimes guys like would get into, you know, have those issues. Cause I, I got to, to be around those students in some form or fashion for like two years. So they would be down there, they'd be going through their pipeline and you'd see them in, you know, in different stuff. And, you know, back and forth from schools and seeing how guys came back, like maybe if they had to refire a school, maybe if they didn't do so well at free fall or if they, they had to come back, that was actually a, a pretty good one too. You could see the students, like how do they respond to kind of that failure in the apprentice course all the way at the end, it was, we didn't have to turn the volume up at all because the volume was naturally turned up by like, okay, well, we're going to go jump. It's been a year since you did a free fall jump. And now we're going to start talking about evaluating you on, you know, not only jumping, like, with your team like getting into a stack but doing follow-on missions and stuff like that volume was naturally turned up but um it was really interesting to see from the beginning um all the way to the end because i saw the product that brian and the indoc instructors or ans instructors at the end would put out right so they've had stress inoculation they got really good at managing their their times of stress but it was just a constant uphill battle a constant curve of more and more things that we would pile on so it was really cool to watch the teams, especially in their debriefs, when they would walk the team through debrief where they just did something that maybe six or you know, six months ago, a year ago, they couldn't even do. They weren't even free fall jumpers. And to watch them brief their team and tell them, okay, when we opened up and we got together and then we landed and then we did a follow on situational medical exercise or something like that, it was really, really cool to watch how they how they'd grown and and the, their ability to control their actions throughout the pipeline like the capacity got bigger and bigger and bigger so um saw a lot of good things i saw some bad things you definitely see guys lose it and kind of handle things the wrong way so i've seen i've seen a, a couple different reactions i won't put any names out there but i've definitely seen tears i've definitely seen some thrown helmets I've definitely seen some poo-poo faces. Um, and and Brian's you know, exactly right. I always the, the only thing that you can control about a situation is your reaction. The only thing that you can control is what other people see. And that's what they're going to remember. I will always remember those guys that threw their helmets. I will always remember, like, remember when that dude cried? It doesn't matter if that guy goes on to get the Medal of Honor. We will sit in a bar one time, and we'll be like, man, Medal of Honor, crazy mission. Remember when that guy cried that one time? <laughs> that, like, I'm sorry, but <laughs> I'm sorry, but you own it. Like, and by the way, it's okay to cry. I'm not a guy that like thinks you're less of a man no, if you show no, emotion. <laughs> but we'll always, and we'll always remember it. I bet that and mustache we'll doesn't cry. I, yeah, no that tears. mustache doesn't cry at all. I'm, that mustache is bringing me to tears. But um, <laughs> no, yeah, it's uh, it, it's really good to see those guys be able to, um, you know, control that, control their reaction, control their emotions, and and really use it in a positive manner and that all starts at assessment selection and that was that was one of the things that used to make me really mad whenever i was an instructor um dudes would get really upset in the pool like on buddy breathing or whatever and they're like oh your buddies they think their buddy's screwing them they get really upset at their buddy or they get really upset at themselves 
and they show it outwardly to the instructors and they're like they swear they throw stuff and you're just like what are you doing right now that's totally unprofessional you know you learn from your mistakes and you keep on moving on you don't sit there and cry about it here in the middle of the pool maybe in your room later on you can do your little pity party and then move on from it but right here when i'm literally face to face with as an instructor these guys that just finished and yeah maybe they got tore up a little bit but learn from it and then move on don't sit there and splash water and blame it on your buddy or blame it on the snorkel blame it on whatever just learn from it and move on yeah i had a guy i had a guy get out of the pool <laughs> grab the bullhorn right the one that everybody's and he just yelled into it and said i quit what? and then slammed it and smashed it on the uh pool deck and just bold walked move. out bold wow. move cotton it, yeah it didn't work out well How for him. Play? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> funny enough but i mean mm. you know we're we're in the water doing stuff and he does that and at the time, he was actually the team leader, so he was an officer. Oh wow! Which is a, you know, a lot of people may not understand. You know, at, at that level in the pipeline, when you're a young airman or you you just joined, you kind of look at those officers and then those cross trainees as man. These guys have a lot more maturity. They have a lot more experience. They're probably going to make it because percentage wise, they they do typically make it. Um, <laughs> And then to have him come out of the water, grab it, quit, and smash it on the pool deck. It was, uh, it was a little weird. Right. <laughs> well, and I think it's the consistency thing, too, because you'll see guys in a one school that, that handle it, and they think they've got a handle on it. And I, I've, I've done the same thing where, like, I'm good, I'm good. And you change your environment, and then it's a whole new situation. And you, you constantly have to be thinking about controlling yourself, uh, how other people are perceiving you and, and, and just being ready for, for what's ever coming your way and, and, and dealing with it in the correct uh, manner. Um, and that goes all the way through team, right? Like it's not like you get on team, things are easy and you're not going to have any more stress in your life and you've mastered it. Uh, so like a, from a team sergeant perspective, this is uh, where Peach comes in. Uh, I'm sure you have tons of stories about guys doing the, the right thing, the wrong thing, uh, guys that in certain situations can't control or, or have lost control of themselves and uh, guys in the, the worst situations that have just maintained it and moved forward. Yeah. So I, I can't remember when I actually wrote the post, but, or at least maybe I was thinking about it in my mind, but talking about getting in a firefight and making fun of yourself and being able to laugh about it. And I mean, we, there's a good chance that a lot of us have had, whether it's parents, friends, bosses that tend to overreact when something happens you know and, and you brought it up it's it's about consistency uh, having that even keel and no matter what happens whether it's a little amount of stress or a large amount of stress stress not crumbling not overreacting to it whether it's anger or not i mean i, I say that as a parent and there have been times where i have probably raised my voice when i shouldn't have so <laughs> I, 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 we're talking about controlling actions. I'm like, well, man, no, uh, no, I think about it. Ooh. Kids are different than work, though. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. But um, you, know, you got to maintain an even keel, whether, especially when you have people that are, are following you and depending on you to have a, a stable reaction to something, almost, almost in a stoic fashion to be able to like bring in the data analyze it correctly and then have the appropriate response and i think that's important whether it's in in the pipeline whether it's in a firefight or whether you're you know under two parachutes that are collapsing and you're heading towards the water right i mean that kind of thing is something that you just got to make sure that you're cognizant of, cognizant of and that whole fight or flight thing is is a real thing and you'll find that most of us if not all of us are going to go towards the fight rather than, you know, back away from it. But that's, right. that's primarily what I've seen. I wouldn't want to get into certain, you know, good or bad scenarios other than, you know, no kidding, been in firefights. And then I look over at the guy next to me and we're fighting and we're just cracking up. And then, oh, look at dude, he goes running across there and he just tripped or he slammed into the wall and <laughs> fell or, you know, he, he's so stressed he that, a, that, a that his, yeah, his belly's flopping out, you know, it, I mean, he's just a complete 
garage sale as he's as he's running across <laughs> getting shot at i mean it's it's funny it really it, is it's still funny man like, yeah <laughs> i mean that's where did the, so that's and where did the offer. goat come from where did that goat come from <laughs> goats and dogs <laughs> where did they come from i have no idea like i don't know why like maybe it's a vacation destination for goats and dogs i don't know and random sheep herders <laughs> <laughs> Where out in the middle of the desert, out in the middle of nowhere. What are you doing here? They're, yeah, what what town right. are you coming from, and yeah. what town are you going to? Well, well I've been they, out here for three days. Know. Dude, you even have Brian, water. Brian and I might have been on a range. So we we were on a range in uh, Africa, and we were out. Shoot, I say range. It was just this huge dry lake bed. But we were out there, and no kidding, at night, like under nods, mm-hmm. and nobody could hear anything. So one of the guys, one of the young guys, is like. Hey, uh, Aaron, check this out. So I kind of like look and he put his, his infrared laser and there was just a family. It was like four in the morning. There was nothing for miles where they came from. There was nothing for miles where they were going. And it was like, there were like a six year old and then like a 12 or 13 year old kid. I was like, what is happening? Where are you right now? Where are you going? What's over there? Like I had so many questions, but they didn't speak English. So. Oh no. (laughs) It's weird. (laughs) Um, Huge surprise. to go back on your uh, little analogy of like staying calm and stuff in a firefight, I think I just want to point out uh, an important thing. You know, most of the time that we spend in the, you know, as PJ CCT is not in that kind of situation. A lot of times we're in the office and we're just BSing. And that's how you build that relationship and build that whole rapport to where you can laugh at each other whenever stuff goes, stuff happens. Most of us have that mentality, but also, um, you know, when you're in a leadership position, you don't automatically know everything that happens. And um, you have to kind of practice that whole having that wisdom like Peach does. That's why everyone goes to him. And that's why he's been promoted and promoted further and further don't give me that look i know what you're doing over there but um that's the whole reason why you know he's been promoted because he has that wisdom and he's able to stay calm and you know when if you're that leader when like a report comes down or a tasking from the commander you start freaking out and everyone sees that you're freaking out they're going to think that you're going to react the same way in a more stressful situation like combat so i just wanted to throw that in there yeah and that that will follow you too that whole um y- you know to the next unit or the next team if you're known as somebody who who wigs out if something comes, it, it's gonna follow right. you. I was gonna mm-hmm. say, I think I've seen it more in like the the medium to low stress environments where guys lose it, and I know I'm way more susceptible to lose it in those environments because I practice and I think about the super high stress environments on a regular basis, right? And so when I get there, and, and for the vast majority of guys that I've ever worked with, you know, when it actually hits the fan. Everybody knows what to do and we all find our, our groove and we're there and we're used to it and we know what to do. But it's when you're in that like sustained low to medium stress environment day after day after day um, that you got to stay on top of it because that's when guys tend to like, you know, just freak out over nothing um, and that, that'll affect your reputation. But you got, you got to do that. I mean, it kind of plays into that, that self-analysis. Um, I know times that I've, you know, lost my temper a little bit or lost control of my emotions. You, I, I'll, and I'll look back and I'll be like, that wasn't even that big of a deal. Why did I react that way when I know that I can handle, you know, way more stressful situations than this? And so it's, it's just like everything else. You constantly have to, at the end of the day, look back at yourself and be like, hey, what I do right, what I do wrong? And how am I going to get past this? You know what I mean? Um, yeah, it's, it's like... A road rage right right i've never i've never had a severe case of road rage but you know you you do there's a an automatic trust right in the driver driving right next to you 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 trust them to maintain you know lane speed don't cut it don't cut me off don't tailgate me all that kind of stuff and then they violate that they violate that trust you betrayed me. Yeah. And then you call them names. <laughs> yeah. And you, you call betrayed names. me via horn. <laughs> you know, they violate that trust. And now it's like you automatically or not automatically, but you have to sit there and go, okay, maybe they didn't realize it. I, I tend to give people the benefit of the doubt, but I, I think that le- lends itself into this a little bit. Is just if, if you're able to just dial that back and go, hey, maybe they didn't see me. Maybe they got something going on. You know, whatever. Or, you know, you could be the, the dude on the side of San, whatever highway in San Antonio just lighting people up. But there's, there's that, too. Well, I mean, I, I don't want to go too far down in your rabbit holes here, but, like, this is all about uh, controlling your emotions, right? And that's, that's the whole pipeline and all the training that we do is designed to break down some of our barriers and to help us control our emotions in the worst of environments. Um, uh, but, like, I know my wife will tell me, she's like, you're, you're a robot. You don't have feelings. 
But, <laughs> but like, and she gets, t- she gets tired of me telling her like, you know, you can control your emotions and your reactions to everything. And she's like, shut up. She, you know, like, but as you go through the pipeline, as you go through these situations, I'm not, it's, I, it's not ideal for marriage, obviously. Um, <laughs> <laughs> but, but you need to actively work on, on, on putting things in perspective. And, and my, my point about this was, is, is uh, for me, getting past my own ego is when I could finally control my emotions and realize that I'm not in charge. I'm not the most you know, important person on this planet. And then I'm not a slave to my emotions anymore because I don't think that I'm the most important person uh, that ever walked the face of the, the earth. Um, uh, like Aaron, you know, like you're, you're, a, you're a passionate dude. What, how have you gotten to the point where you can control yourself and, and, and find your strategies to, to make it through and control your, your actions? Passionate. <laughs> Passionate. <laughs> uh, I didn't want to say loud, I, but <laughs> it, it, dude, it took a lot, man, for me that, that emotional maturity. And I am loud. Like, you know, I do, um, that even keel is a big one. Uh, I had some really good input, um, you know, from one of the first guys that ever sort of evaluated me, uh, is a good friend of mine. His name's Nick. I know he listens to the podcast. What's up, Nick. But Nick gave me some feedback. He goes, you know, you may not be stressed in your head, but the way that you look and the way that you sound makes me think that you're stressed. I don't think you're actually stressed. I don't think you're actually freaking out, but you think fast, you talk fast, you talk loud. He was like, when you raise your voice, you lose your power and calm breeds calm. So you need everybody else. So as the stress goes up for me, I think in my head all the time, as the stress gets higher and higher and higher, I no kidding, it's part of my cross check now, I think to myself, Get calmer, take it easy, make sure everybody knows that you've got a handle on this. Like it, it's something that I've had to develop because I am passionate. I, I do have that fiery personality, right? Like I, I think that's a nice way of saying that I'm an egotistical, narcissistic megalomaniac, but um, that's yeah. exactly you like this. You know how long I had to practice? You know how long I had to practice on that? I like me and Eminem just yeah. putting syllables in words. So many S's in narcissistic <laughs> sixteen bars. <laughs> 16 bars. I got a hot 16 for y'all. Um, but it's, it's something I've had to develop and, and Trent, I mean, I love that you said you had to, you, you had to get past your own ego, man. So did I, I had to get that emotional maturity to be able in that moment to go, okay, back it down. Remember other people are looking to you like as a team member, you can, you can lose your emotions a little bit as a team member, not as a team leader, not as, not as a troop chief, not as a team sergeant. You can't do that. You, you have to be the one that is the calmest in the room when everything is burning down around you because the men deserve it, the mission deserves it, and, and you deserve it as a professional to yourself. So for me, short answer, I had to develop it. I had to work on it. I had to constantly seek feedback and most importantly, internalize the feedback that was given, right? You can't just be like, oh, well, that's, that's just one dude's opinion that's the wrong road. That's the, that's the wrong way to think of it. So, but you know, I I won't lie. Like the good things too, like it's not just bad, but keeping that even keel, a a great sports analogy is act like you've been there before. Right. Like the first time that you do something well, man, you don't strut around and pat yourself on the back. Like that's not what you do. Like act like you've been there before. Act like you've won a championship before. Act like you've done (laughs) this good thing before. Um, because people, people take information from that too. Um, yeah, so that's good and bad, but I think that's it for me. That that emotional maturity piece of it was uh, was tough, um, and especially for louder personality type dudes. Like, man, I, I get emotional. I am passionate. So, right. I mean, I, I've heard that calm breeds calm a lot from, especially the, the a lot of the PJs that I've been around the medical community. So, like, you know, Brian, like it, it, it goes all the way up to if if I have my leg blown off, right? I, I want you to react a certain way, and is that something that you guys that focus on? Uh, as PJs, especially because, you know, that's what I've seen, you know, from my experiences uh, uh, working with uh, some of you guys. Oh, yeah. Yeah. So a lot of times, you know, whenever we do our training or even, you know, now in the PA career or whatever, I, I try and put people under the stressful situation like you're talking about. We're all it's all about like algorithms. You know that if a person's legs blown off, you go through your XABCs or whatever, you take care of things in a list. And we practice under stressful situations. So we want to make sure that you have that list in your head whenever you see that actual situation happen in front of you. So constantly just going through that, practicing your skills, like at night, we used to, you know, in the helicopters and stuff. And Aaron could talk to you, like talk your off about all this stuff too, because, you know, we used to do it together, but we'd, you know, be under MVGs trying to get the IV. And of course, as a team leader, we'd be like, Hey, we're going to try and do an IV back here. So that doesn't mean that the plane, that the helicopter is going to be, yeah, it's not going to be steady or anything like that during training anyway. But you know, that means the, the 
pilots are gonna be like, let's do this. All right, low levels or whatever, go through this valley. Oh. So, um, you know, we'd always practice in the most difficult situations so we can get that muscle memory and that whole checklist going through our head as we're going through that stressful situation. That way, whenever we actually get into that, then hopefully we react a little bit better and we've been there before, like you guys are talking about. Right. I always go from the, uh, from the other side of it, Trent. Hey, man, you know why I'm so calm in medical emergencies? It's not my emergency. I'm just here to help out. You know what I'm saying? Like, hey, man, I'm here to help. My name's Aaron. I'm your PJ for the day. What seems to be the problem, you know? Let's get this thing going. Jeez. Uh, yeah. Cut yeah. uniform, <laughs> give IV. But, I mean, I, I know when, yeah. when, when I've been evaluating students in the past for how they react to things, one of the things I always go back to is the, the first time I was ever in a firefight, hearing my, my JTAC at the time come up on, my, on the comms and, and calmly walk down, hey, troops in contact, uh, I, and I just want to start with Air Force JTACs are the best uh, troops in contact, and he, he just goes down the list of everything that was coming our way. Um, and this is you know for Peach like that that to me because it was my first time ever being there, you know, and you feel that that stuff rising up, and then I hear that guy come up on comms and be like, hey, troops in contact, you know, PKM, AKs, RPGs, and he's just he's just calmly and coolly going through, and it helped me. And I'm sure I'm not the only one that was on that team. Uh, that that calmed down a little bit, knowing uh, that that guy at least sounded super calm. So that's that's a double edged sword, right? It's great yeah. for you guys, and it's great for me because I'm able to get articulate the information correctly, calmly, and get it to the pilots that need to hear it, so that we can engage the targets. The problem with that is that when I say, "Hey, we're troops in contact," yada yada yada, here's the information. The pilots thinking well i mean i he seems really calm yeah i mean this, this dude's not breathing heavy he's not so i so we do tend to we will like if we're not getting the urgency that we need out of the pilots we will induce a little bit more um inflection in our voice <laughs> and ramp it up and then maybe I just walk on over here next to a 50 cal or somebody who's got an M4 that's laying it and sit, hear a couple pop, 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 pop. Right. And then go, oh, look at that. Look, look, now he's 30 seconds out instead of two minutes. <laughs> <laughs> Funny how that happens. You know, so, uh, you know, you do have to, or at least me as a JTAC, I had to recognize when to turn it on, talking to pilots and when not to. But. Uh, that that's just been my experience. That's awesome. Yeah, I mean, I, I just I just always found it so impressive, and I I didn't even think about that because I'm not a JTAC, but you know, like that 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 maturity to, to but you, like you said, you can control it. You can you can mm -hmm. run through your your own emotions, and and just like being an instructor, uh, people will be like, uh, uh, you know, you seemed really angry. And I'm like, oh well, I wasn't really angry. I'm just trying to get the students to respond the way that I need them to respond for them to be successful. Um, so. I mean that's that's all the training that's everything on team that's the that's the entire career field is is overcoming your own obstacles and then um and, and reacting appropriately so uh i think we just open up anybody have anything about maturity and controlling your actions or uh, strategies i think trent i i did i i think that's important what you said though is that this is about controlling your actions it doesn't necessarily mean you need to be an even keel every time i mean right. just talking about it with the the jtac thing controlling it being aware you said you you know people perceived you as being angry like, no no i wasn't angry that was that was purposeful i was controlling that emotion and then as soon as you were able to step in you know away from cones you're like yeah yeah what's going on guys yeah being able to control it so that, that was a good point yeah some and sometimes you gotta there's been times where i've had to raise my voice at my team members and when i look at them and they're not moved like guys Sometimes just saying, hey, guys, five minutes in the helicopter is going to be there. We've got a lot of work to do. You need to button everybody up. Man, that, that might not work, right? Like, I'm, I might have to get directive. I might have to use some of that. I might have to let the animal out of the cage a little bit. You know what I'm well, saying? Let's talk about lying then. How many times have Dang. I lied to PJ saying, hey, you, you got five minutes to package him up? Man, yeah. there's, there's only one thing I trust. Knowing there's 10 Man, minutes. I don't, I, don't, I don't trust time calls from a JTAC for yeah. anything. Be like, okay, bro, I, I got it. Helicopter's two minutes out. It's always two minutes that's, out. That's because I, that's I know later. that you guys are going to be, oh, give, me, give me one more minute. Give me one more minute. <laughs> uh, that's an accurate description. Uh, you're a pilot, man. You I, got, I you resemble guys, that remark. Yeah, you, <laughs> well, you guys get tunnel vision, you know. I mean, hey, 
JTACs are the same way. They start looking up and they're... <laughs> <laughs> yes. All right. So evaluate the situation, select the appropriate response, and that's how you control your actions. Summary. Boom. Dang. Dang. Man, crushed it. Put a bow on it, gents. You're the robot. Yeah. You don't have any. Yeah. You're, you're the bow. Total control. Yeah, no. Calm I am down, not. Brian. Boy, for the biggest guy in the room, jeez. <laughs> I know, right? <laughs> so I just had to throw out the, the flex there. Uh, no, I think, like you said, and everyone's kind of echoing it, just the important thing is that, you know, whatever situation you find yourself in, you guys were talking about, so for sp- specifically for selection, whenever you get there, you're going to be excited, you're going to be all that. But be calm on the outside, introduce yourself, get to know your team, and that way whenever, like Peach was talking about, you get to those firefights, you get to the those hard times, whenever you get to in-dock, you can react appropriately and get the task done. So I just want to throw that in there. Cool. All right. Anybody got any save rounds? Anything else? Good to go. Good to go. Good. Everybody, uh, just want to thank you all for listening to the podcast. Make sure you go on YouTube, iTunes, everything else. Leave us a review. Um, It's One's Ready. This is the team room. Uh, Signing off. We'll see you next time. Thanks. Later. Peace.